Well, hey everybody and welcome. This is Terry with Your Kind of Creative and today I'm going to share with you um, my alcohol inks on tile process. Um, I've been doing this quite a while. Um, I've really gotten more into the acrylic pores which I love and I'm addicted to but I kind of wanted to put out um, this video for quite a while um, never really shared this process so I thought I would share it um, creativity I think um, should be shared and I know that I'm out there looking all the time at different videos and seeing everybody's processes so I thought that I would go ahead and share that with you today um, this is probably going to be a two-part video. Um, this process takes a little bit longer than um, acrylic pouring. Um, some of the products that you'll need are alcohol inks. I use the Ranger Rick. Um, I'm sorry. I use the um, not Ranger Rick. It is actually Tim Holtz or Jim Holtz. <laughs> Sorry about that. And they're the Adirondack uh, inks. Um, I have a lot of different colors. I'm not going to sit and explain every color. Um, but they range in gold tones to red tones to blue tones, orange tones, green tones, and many, many different tones. Um, I have um, mixatives which I like to use in this process. Also, uh, they're um, a little thicker and they're they're really cool to use. I really love these. So you'll see that um, I use alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I use a 91% um, um, alcohol. This helps move the inks on your tiles and and helps them flow. And you can also get um, Adirondack also put out a alcohol blending solution. Um, and and I'm pretty much sure it's pretty much just like the the rubbing alcohol. Um, to begin my process, I use, um, this is a Tim Holtz, uh, yeah, Tim Holtz, I don't know why I'm having trouble with that name, I, I sincerely apologize, it is um, Tim Holtz, and this is just a stamper that he has out there that has Velcro on it, and this is just felt that I have cut up to fit. So. To begin this process, um, I am going to do a background first before I start my airbrushing. Um, I use an airbrush. This is a an Eclipse, um, an Iwata Eclipse airbrush. It's a dual action. Um, yeah, and this is what I actually use to move my inks around on my tile. Um, been doing it for a long, long time, and it, it, it's so fun. Um, I've seen this process. I know others have um, used canned air. You, I don't think you get the same effect. Um, this takes a while to to get your rhythm down and your airflow down in these. There are cheaper air airbrushes out there. Um, this one is kind of an expensive one. Um, I'm not going to hook up any paint to it. I'm strictly using it with my air compressor for the airflow. So, to begin with, um, this is a tile that I have gotten. Um, I think it's 12 by 12. I didn't quite measure it, but I think that's the size of it. It is, it is just a ceramic tile. Um, I actually got, I get my tiles from, we have a Habitat for Humanity. Um, we have a couple shops here where I live. 
and they have all sorts of house supplies, you know, paints and tiles and and everything that you buy at the Habitat for Humanity store goes right back into Habitat for Humanity. So I like to, in my process of doing different things, I love to go and look there and see if there's anything that I can utilize in my art projects. So, and this is one thing that I do use. Um, I always start out, before I do anything, and I put a little rubbing alcohol onto my tiles, and I just wipe them down. I like to really start with clean tiles, especially if I go to, like, Habitat. They, they come um, pretty dirty, you know, when you get them, so. And then that dries just really fast, so I like to start that way. Now, um, when I get into the process of the airbrush, I'll probably be on my, my second part of this video. And I will probably just, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to talk through that. I, I think I'm just going to let you see the process and how it works. But to begin with, I will begin this and show you the process. And I'm going to pick out three colors that I want for my background. And I'm going to start with a sunshine yellow and a um, this is a pearl blue or pool blue pool blue it says. And one of my favorite colors that they have is what's called a lettuce. So um, this process kind of makes a mess, so um, wherever you're airbrushing, you might want to be in a box. Um, I find it easier when I'm doing it to sit down, so I have some backdrops here so the paint doesn't get all over. Um, I start with alcohol on to my felt pad. And I just, I drop it in different spots. No pattern, just. These are going to blend together. And I'm only going to dab a little blue. Don't want a lot of blue. I'm going to add yellow to this too, which I thought I did. It looks brown on here, but it is actually a yellow. Um, but I have a lighter yellow that I'm going to add to it also. And we'll see how this goes. Start in my corners just to see what it's going to do and see if I like the colors. With alcohol inks, doing this, um, you can always go over it. <laughs> you can actually wash the whole thing <laughs> if you don't like it. But these are kind of the colors that I was going for for my background in this. And it dries pretty fast, so you want to do this actually pretty fast. Sometimes I've had to, um, when I'm working on the big tiles, um, I have had to reload uh, my colors because it's just not enough to stamp them out. And I, I'm kind of losing it here. So I'm just going to re add right over the top the same colors again. Don't have to remember how I put them on last time. I just want to get those colors in there. They will all blend again. And it adds dimension and and design when it's a little different. A 
a little more blue. Now I'm also going to add on top just a little more alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. And it looks a little darker, but I just blend. And I pounce. As you can probably hear in the video. It's I don't rub. You don't get the same effect if you rub it like that, see? So you do want to pounce. And and the lighter shades. I'm just gonna go back over it a little bit. And sometimes in this process I will add a few drops of more rubbing alcohol ink to bring up those inks. And what will happen if you over ink this and stamp this, then you're going to be picking up color. So you don't really want to do that, so you want to go back to your color palette. Your color and 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 redo it to your liking, of course. I'm sorry, I'm doing this off camera. see here that this is taking out because of the al rubbing alcohol it's actually you know it's forming cells and bringing that that up which I like so I I do that so until I like it Another thing I like to do is get my, now this I do kind of rub a little bit, and I'll go back over those. So there is my base in my, for my background tile, and I'm going to look at it to see which side I really like to start with here. I think I'm going to leave it that way. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little example of my process in the middle here. I think maybe a little lower. I'm going to pour this on and then I'm going to move it. Move this ink to where I want it. This process is, um, will, you will over layer, 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 layer.